Hello folks, welcome back to Marketing Management and Brand Identity in the Music Industry. This week we're going to be talking about the bundle rights. Okay, what is infringement and what does fair use mean? As always, you can find this presentation on our Google Classroom in the form of slides if you wish to go through it at your own pace. Let's begin. So last week we talked about copyright and how to protect your, yourself, your music, your compositions and your recordings. So these are some really great useful resources okay, that you can uh, click on in the Google Slides as well as found in our um, Google Classroom as well. So this week we're talking about bundle of rights, the bundle of rights. So the, the copyright isn't just one right, but it is part of a bundle of rights. Songwriters will transfer a 50% interest in the copyright of the composition to their publishers. Okay, in exchange for receiving roughly 75% of the income generated from the compositions or songs. There are four primary income generating rights of copyright that composers can make money on. That is the right to reproduce and distribute their music, so the mechanical right. The right of public performance. The right of uh, synchronization rights, being used, uh, their music being used on television and YouTube and in movies, as well as derivative rights. And we're going to talk about all of these things. <clears throat> so let's start with mechanical rights. So what are mechanical rights? Well, they are to mechanically reproduce a song in the form of right um, records, okay, or LPs, excuse me, so 78s, 45s, um, record albums. So singles and albums, um, eight tracks, cassettes, CDs, or in the digital world. Record companies must get the license to make a mechanical reproduction from your publisher. So the rates, the royalty rates for mechanical reproductions of albums and songs are as follows. So if your song, if your recording is under five minutes long, you will receive 0.091 cents per copy of that song. Now, if your song is over five minutes, you will receive 0.0175 cents per minute of your song. So it's almost better to keep under five minutes per song, but you will, you will earn more money. So here's an example. So let's say you sold 1 million copies uh, of a song at, okay, <clears throat> your song is less than five minutes. So you're selling it at 0.91 cents per copy of song. Your publisher, okay, is going to make $91,000. Of that $91,000, you as the songwriter, as the artist, get about 75% of that, $68,000, from only one song, if you sell a million copies. Okay, but if you're, if you're going by the per minute rate, okay, you will not make as much. So, right of public performance. So you have the right to publicly perform your song. Now, what are public performances? Well, that is either through radio, being streamed on the internet, played in nightclubs and arenas, especially in sports venues. Okay, but how does a songwriter or publisher know if their song is getting played? Well, it's it's very difficult. It's It's almost near impossible to know if your song is getting played on radio, as there are so many different radio stations out there. But there are organizations that their sole job is to make sure that to look out for your rights as the artist. And we've got a few in Canada, the performance rights organizations, we call them PROs. And some of them are the Canadian Musical Reproduction Right Agency, um, the Canadian Private Copying Collective, Society of Composers, Authors and Music Publishers, as well as the Musicians' Right Organization of Canada, MROC. Okay. They have control, all, uh, they control all of the songs that you hear on the radio today. So radio stations have to actually speak with these organizations before they can play anybody's music to make sure they're not infringing upon anybody's um, pu public performance rights. <clears throat> so, uh, let's keep going. The synchronization right. This is the right to synchronize a song from one medium, audio, to another medium, in video. Some songs that you might hear in terms of synchronization are played in the background of movies, in TV commercials. Now, in order for people to synchronize from the audio to the visual, 
Okay, they those companies need to obtain the rights from the owners of the copyright. So, for example, in a movie, okay, the movie producers need to get the rights from the publisher to be allowed to have that song played in the background of your movie. Okay, and typically publishers will demand fees, a uh, very large chunks of fees, to be able to use this music, and it can range from fifty thousand dollars up to five hundred thousand dollars. And remember, the songwriter. <coughs> that's you, you will always receive about 75% of that income. Okay. And the last right that we're going to talk about is called the derivative right. Okay. Derivative rights is the right to derive a new work from a prior copy written work. Okay. Where you get a lot of songs that take samples or chunks um, or snippets and place them into other songs. And this happens a lot, especially right now. Now, this also happened in, 2000, in the year 2000. So, there was this original song by Cameo called Candy. Okay, it was a top five uh, Hot 100 hit in 1988. But in 2000, Mariah Carey took this song and, and incorporated elements of the original song Candy by Cameo into her new song called Loverboy. Mariah Carey had to obtain the derivative rights from Cameo, which is the band, okay, to be able to have these snippets from the original song in her new song. And by doing this, okay, um, both Cameo made a lot of money off Mariah Carey's song and Mariah Carey made an exceptional amount of money off of her title song, Loverboy, that came out in 2000. Okay, um, there are two other rights that we won't be really talking in, in, in depth on. They're called the grand rights and print rights. Print rights is really obvious, okay? You have the printing rights to the printed, um, the published printed music uh, of your, your own, right? So if your music is published in a printed format, you have a right to that and a right to earn income off of that. And there are also other rights called grand rights where you take a song and you use it in a dramatic setting. And this is typically, this typically happens in Broadway plays. And for example, the Broadway play of Mamma Mia, all of the music in that in that Broadway play is <coughs> taken from um, ABBA songs, the band ABBA, okay? Um, and so they had to gain the, the grand rights in order to use those songs in that Broadway play. And so both ABBA, who is the original creator of those songs in the Broadway play Mamma Mia, as well as in the movie Mamma Mia, they're making income as well as everybody involved in the play. The last thing I would like to talk about, two last things, sorry, infringement and fair use. So infringement, people use portions of your copywritten work. Okay, if you think they've used your, your work, you can send a notice and file a copyright claim. You can sue people for copyright infringement, but it is not easy to do. You have to prove that, that they are infringing upon your creative work, your intellect, intellectual property. Okay. And you need three elements of proof. And this can be very hard to do and to prove. Okay, you need to have your copyright registration. So you have registered your copyright, your music, your recording to prove that you own it, that you are the sole creator of it. You also need to prove that they had access to it. You need to prove that the person who infringed on your work had access to your work beforehand. This is really hard to prove. How do you prove that somebody listened to your song on the radio? How do you prove that? It is possible, but it's challenging. And you need to have proof that your music or their infringed music, their work, okay, is substantially similar to your, your piece of music. So you need to prove that your work and their work are similar. Okay, there's this very common notion. Okay, if you only use four bars of someone's song, that's not considered copyright infringement. You're only using a very small piece. That's absolutely not true. Even if you use three notes from a song, that can be considered copyright infringement. So be very careful. Make sure it's original. Don't plagiarize. Okay, um, some very notable cases in copyright infringement. When we talk about um, the George Harrison from the Beatles, okay, his song, My Sweet Lord, <coughs> went to court. <coughs> Excuse me. And he was held liable for subconscious, cop subconsciously copying 
So something that he heard, he got it in his ear, and he's like, oh, that's a great tune. I think I came up with it, and he wrote his own song based on it, My Sweet Lord. But it actually sounded very similar to Chiffon's music, He's So Fine. And so um, uh, Chiffon's lawyers proved that George Harrison actually did infringe upon those rights. Okay, uh, we also get um, Cell versus Gibb in the Bee Gees. Okay, um, and the biggest payout uh, infringement case is uh, based on uh, Blurred Lines. Okay, the song Blurred Lines and Marvin Gaye. So have a listen to that. Take a look at that um, article from the New York Times. The last thing I want to talk about is fair use. So in circumstances, the law allows the limited use of copyrighted works without getting the permission of the copyright owner. Now, there are circumstances where this is okay, and you cannot get in trouble for doing that. That would be in news reporting, religious settings, um, educational settings. So everything that we listen to in class is protect. I am protected because it is for educational purposes, and even in parodies. Okay, When works are used in a non-profit educational setting, this is okay. You do not need to get permission from the publisher, from the artist, to use them. <clears throat> there was this case, this human, can human cannonball case. So even though it's not music, the if you've ever seen in, in Cleveland, Ohio, there's this gentleman, okay, who shoots himself out of a cannon. There was this news um, news reporter, news station, out of Cleveland, Ohio, that recorded and filmed this guy shooting out of the cannon. Okay, and they put it on the nightly news. And the gentleman, the human cannon, the guy actually sued the television station because he said you're taking my creative art this is my work and i'm not getting paid for you showing this on tv now nobody's going to come to my show because they can just watch it on tv for free and so we actually sued the company because they they did not fairly use his work they did not get permission to film him shooting out of the cannon now there are certain circumstances in news reporting where there is fair use copyright, that you don't need to get permission. But in terms of entertainment, that's kind of outside of the music world, or if it's a live concert, an entire concert that a news station is filming and then publishes it on their television channel, that artist and that entertainer actually has the right to sue. It is not fair use because that performer is not making any money off of that concert. Nobody then needs to go and actually see it. All right, folks, that's everything for today. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at any point in time. And don't forget to answer this week's discussion question. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye for now.